Can I hear that? Hello, Temecula Valley. Hello, French Valley. Hello, Hemet Valley. This is our community news. Happy Monday to you. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in and watch your local community news show. Zachary Bach, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We've got a packed show for you guys. I'm really excited about everything that we've got here in studio for you. Um, we've got uh, a special guest already here with us, uh, Pastor Brian E. Hawkins and City Councilman at San Jacinto. We're going to be talking about what he has going on um, down in San Jacinto, uh, up in Hemet, all of the good works that are going on, and then, of course, his, uh, his church, Divine Appointment Worship Center. Um, so we're going to interview them. Uh, he's in studio already. And then we're going to check in with FSL Mobile Auto Repair. Now, in order to get on our community news, it's not just about small businesses. We really like to have small businesses that are doing good things for our community. Absolutely. FSL Mobile, Mobile Auto Repair, uh, they're involved in a program called Backpacks for Change. Now, Backpacks for Change is, uh, is um, this really great program where they're helping victims of human trafficking. Um, they recently got 30 backpacks donated uh, to the San Diego Human Trafficking Task Force. So uh, good on them. They're also here in studio with uh, Amy Serpa. She's going to be doing that interview. And then we're going to tell you about something that we've got going on here um, at our community. our community. So our community is not just uh, a news station. We are primarily a real estate company, and we have our community real estate school. We're going to be teaching high school students starting today at 4 o'clock, and then adults starting next week. So that's, that's something that we've got going on. If you want to come by and see us, see what we've got going on, we've got a, a, an open house tomorrow. So we could talk about that here in a little while. But before we do any of that, for those of you who tune in right from the beginning, we've got the question of the day. So this is a new segment that we're, we've started. We want to encourage all of the interaction that we're getting from our community. And so uh, we're going to jump in. I'm going to tell you what the question of the day is. Uh, the question of the day is this. Should there be limits to free speech? Comments are going to go crazy on this one, David. It's been a really interesting debate that's being had right now on the national stage with uh, President Trump's Twitter feed being silenced. And did you see what the what the Supreme Court just said? No, I didn't. So President Trump had some people blocked on Twitter, and they okay. said that that was unconstitutional for him to block people. You know, uh, so I briefly had my, my own run politically, very briefly. <laughs> And uh, some of us like to laugh about that. I like to laugh about it a little bit too. But uh, that's one of the rules that I read is you actually can't block people on social yeah, media. And so um, that's something that's interesting. We're having a lot of interesting conversations about free speech. Recently, NAR came out and said that uh, that's the National Association of Realtors, uh, that they're going to start coming out against uh, people that are uh, speaking unethically. So uh, if you want to be a part of this show, if you've got a story that you feel like we should be covering here at our community news, feel free to contact us on Facebook and on YouTube. We've got a lot of good things going on, and we would love to have you be a part of it. But before we do any of that, we've got somebody in studio right now that I'm very excited about. That's Miss Nikki Arango with the five-day forecast. Nikki, I had her in here months ago talking to, to, uh, to her about doing this five-day forecast for us. So, uh, Nikki, we're going to send it over to you right now with the five-day forecast in the Temecula Valley. How's the weather looking this week uh, there, Nikki? Good morning and happy Monday, Temecula Valley. We have a beautiful week in store as far as weather goes for you guys. For Temecula, starting the week in the low 70s and ending in the mid 80s. For Marietta, 73 for Monday and Tuesday, 84 for Thursday, and 85 for Friday. Winchester, just a little bit cooler, 69 and 70 to start the week and ending in the low 80s. Hemet, 71 and 72 to get your week started and 84 by the end. San Jacinto, Monday and Tuesday, 71 and 72. Thursday and Friday will be a beautiful 84 degrees. Wildemar, 72 and 73 for the beginning of the week, 84 and 85 for the end. Lake Elsinore, Monday and Tuesday are 73. Thursday and Friday, 84 and 85. And Menifee, 72 to get your week started and 85 to end it. I'm Nikki, and that was your weekly weather. That was fantastic. Nikki Arango with the five-day forecast for our Temecula Valley. Bravo. Um, at this point, I'm actually going to go uh, get set up with our special guest, Zachary Bach. You feel free to take the stage. Man, in the 80s, by the end of the week. 
so next we are going to have Brian Hawkins, who is the pastor and councilman. So he's the pastor of the Divine Appointment Church, and then he is a San Jacinto City Councilman. Brian has been doing absolutely fantastic things for his community, and he's live here in the studio. Most recently, uh, Brian said this quote. He said, this country may have an ugly past, but together we can build a beautiful future. So we're going to go over to David right now and Brian. Live. So thank you to everybody who's continued to watch here. Uh, what I was getting ready to say here about our community news was we want to have an impact in the community. And we also want to highlight people who are already having a substantial impact. And one of those people is Councilman and Pastor Brian Hawkins. Brian Hawkins, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bridges need to be get bridged right now. You know, people need to, uh, to, to unite. There's a lot of division in this country. And I find that one of the things that you're doing through watching some interviews with you is that you have been interviewing people, uh, or uh, Sheriff Chad Bianco, about breaking down this division between community and law enforcement. Can you speak to that a little bit for me? Uh, absolutely. Um, so a couple of years ago when uh, then Lieutenant uh, Bianco was running for uh, sheriff, which eventually he won, uh, you know, I had reached out to him. I reached out to his campaign and, and I wanted to sit down with him. I knew that, that, you know, there was always this this division, you know, this I mean, this was even before 2020 and, you know, all the protests, defund the police talk. You know, this was, you know, a year prior to this that, you know, I grew up in the inner city. I grew up in a community where, you know, police was heavily, heavily, you know, um, you know present in those communities. and there was really not too much of a good relationship between sure. law enforcement. And, you know, I always told myself, you know, given the opportunity and a chance, you know, then I'm not going to jump on either side. I'm going to come in the middle mm -hmm. and try to bring it together. And that was one of the things that I shared with Lieutenant Bianco at the time, that I wanted to be a bridge between law enforcement and community. And not just a bridge between law enforcement and community. Um, I, I probably watch about two hours of YouTube videos and Facebook videos uh, with this man trying to get ready for this interview today. I wanted to respect your time while you're coming out here. And one of the things that I saw was there was a, um, a protest where there was probably Antifa, uh, BLM uh, activists on one side, and you know Trump supporters on the other side. And um, in the middle is this big, handsome, powerful man um, trying to bring some peace to the situation. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you've been doing trying to break down some of these barriers? Absolutely. You know, and, and it goes back to the quote that, uh, you know, our current president Trump said uh, back with the Charleston situation. And I know it, it offended some people when he said that there's good on both sides. So I'm just going to take that quote and bring it to that moment. There's Americans on both sides, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's one of the things we move away from. You know, we got caught up in, you know, the Antifa, the BLM, Trump supporters. We get caught up in labeling individuals, that's right. black, white. And there's so much labeling that you know, once you find the division, you can now separate. And one of the things I wanted to remind everyone that, you know, this is an American that we're attacking. This is an, this is an American that, that's laying on the ground being, you know, you know, you know, beat or whatever the term you want to call it. And, you know, you know my constitutional oath, both foreign and domestic, mm -hmm. is to uphold and, and protect even a person that's wrong, even in a person that's agitating, even in a person that, you know, it, it's it, it, for all intents and purposes was out of place in that moment. You know, that was still an American, and I, it was my duty. I think, I, I can't remember exactly who said it. I think it may have been Thomas Paine, but he said, uh, you know, I may not agree with what you uh, have to say, but I will defend until my death your right to say it. Absolutely. And I think that we get lost sometimes. And, you know, I have supporters on both sides of the aisle, and I hate that there even needs to be an aisle. I think we should tear it down, tear down the aisle. Why right? Why left? I think that there's so much that we can accomplish by working together. And when the people start doing that, then that's when uh, something really uh, divine is going to happen. Uh, so can you tell me about some of the work that you're doing with your Divine Appointment Worship Center in San Jacinto? Absolutely. And, you know, go back to what my mother, uh, Dr. Arville Hawkins said, you know, she always used to tell me, you know, Brian, you really don't need a building to get your message out. You know, right. God has called you beyond the walls. And so, you know, uh, when I did at the beginning of, you know, this whole, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, you know, I chose the side. I didn't choose the Black Lives Matter. I didn't choose e either side. I chose the middle. I'm always going to be in the middle 
and bring the two sides together. And uh, because I didn't go far left or I didn't go far right, I alienated some people who were really angry um, off of the moment and situation. And so it kind of changed, uh, you know, how I was doing church, especially with COVID and shutting the church down. Um, but it didn't stop me from being able to preach the gospel. It didn't stop me from getting God's message out, you know. And so, would you um, do anything differently? No, 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 absolutely not. No, I'm, I'm set. My father says this beautiful quote, you know, make a decision and stick with it. Mm -hmm. And I did. I made a decision and, and I stuck with it, you know, regardless of the outcome. Now, people are sending me messages. I voted for President Trump. And people are like, you know, you know, hey, your guy lost. And, but, you know, I'm not stuck on that moment. I'm, I'm in 2021 now. And so, sure. Yeah, you know, I'm in 2021 as well. You know, we we're we have President Biden, who is uh, who is going to be our president here on January 20th, and you know, of course, I support him. I just like I supported Trump, and hoping to God that he's going to do more than what anyone has done in the past. And I, I can hope beyond reason, and I might be wrong, right? So uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about uh, during this uh, this lockdown is uh, living in a neurodiverse household. I'm on the autism spectrum. I have a couple of kids that are on the autism spectrum as well. And uh, it, the, the youth, um, I feel like, are struggling a lot with the schools being shut down. Um, what is it like for you in your neurodiverse household with your children? Uh, you know, just like so many other parents um, that are struggling with this, you know, distant learning. Um, you know, even here today, I brought my children here to the studio with me while their mother is at work. Um, you know. One about being an American is that, you know, we've got to make it work with what we have access to. Mm -hmm. um, my son has an IEP, mm -hmm. and so his learning ability is a little bit different than my daughter. And so I have to be focused more with him getting online and, and navigating through uh, the situation. I mean, it's a difficult time for everybody, every sure. parent. Uh, I was talking to uh, the principal at the school this morning, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's their next move, their next step. And there really is no light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. No one knows when the school is going to open back up. And so I can't focus on hoping it's going to open back up. But at the same time, my children's future is at stake. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, I have to do what I have to do to invest in it, you know, try to, you know, work with the community, get with different people that, uh, that are smarter than me, That's you right. know, find out ways to where, you know, before all of this, I would, I, I, I've, and I want to share this with you. There was this thing called the School of Hope. Uh, that was really big during slavery and, and you know, a lot of the community would come together and where you know, kids weren't allowed to go to school and, and learn, but they start sharing one another's knowledge to make sure that nobody was left out and yes. kind of like with, you know, 2001, the No Child Left Behind. This was something that was going on and, you know, even amongst the community with, with a lot of African Americans during slavery and even after that. And so, you know, this is where I'm trying to pull onto the community, mm -hmm. you know, let's get together, let's, you know, do Zoom, let's find a way to where our children aren't losing out because Absolutely. the schools are closed. You know, too long we've been lying, relying on the government, mm -hmm. you know, to educate our children, but this is time for the community to pull itself together and help out. Some of the reasons why at the end of the show, we've got the real estate education course, which we're launching I, online. I, I love that. And uh, we've been working with, uh, you know, Palm Springs Unified School District. We're working with a couple of different school districts to do this. And I think it's part of that empowering youth that is so important that we've really getting lost on. I think, you know, once the, the vaccine is out, once teachers are feeling comfortable, hopefully we'll be able to get reopened. But one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was um, we lose people, we lose veterans at the edge of their rope, right? Mm. And it's not, the homelessness is not just a veterans issue, it's a human being issue, absolutely, right? And we lose uh, youth at the end of their rope. We use, lose people in the prison system at the end of their rope. What is your unique experience? You said in your campaign video, that you had been incarcerated at one point. Absolutely. Um, what is your unique perspective, having found yourself in the trenches? You know, uh, and, and I thank you for bringing it up. Um, one of the things that does separate me from many politicians is that I have been in the core of some of the things that they're arguing about, you know, systemic racism and redlining and, you know, the prison system and being black, you know, and, and for lack of better terms, the, or white man's America that has been, you know, pushed around all these different books that people have been pushing on. Um, you know, I grew up in the inner city. I grew up around drugs. I grew up around violence. Uh, what I didn't grow up around was excuses. Mm. That's the big thing. I didn't grow up around excuses. My parents never taught me to live with excuses. Mm -hmm. They never taught me to, to make excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother, you make a bed hard, you got to lie in it, you know, sure. Uh, whatever quote was a soft, 
<laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's just a lot of just different quotes my mother would say, but, but because I experienced mm -hmm. being incarcerated, because I experienced going to prison, and then when I got out, I also experienced perseverance. Mm -hmm. I also experienced believing in myself. I also experienced that, hey, you know, I don't have to keep bringing up my past as a way of using it as an excuse. I use it as an empowerment. You know, there are a lot of people who have made mistakes. This country is built on mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, America has felonies. Sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, absolutely. You, you look at a doubt. The, yeah, when you look at the foundation of this country, it's overcome its adversity. It's been incarcerated. You know, America was told by Britain that it wouldn't be anything. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the reason why we had the Revolutionary War. And so the very thing that makes America great is everything that, you know, has pushed me and, and, and caused me to champion forward. So I can be a hope to many people who will still use it as an excuse. I'm black, I've been to prison, you know, and all these other different reasons to give up hope. I have two more questions for you before yes. we, we move on and uh, jump into FSL auto repair and backpacks for children. Um, now, this is a question specifically for you. Um, you know, you brought up redlining and you said, you know, sometimes you know, if you make a bed, even if it's a hard bed, you got to sleep in it. There's a lot of people that are sleeping in a bed that they didn't even make. Right. It was made for them before they were even born. And so um, I feel like a lot of people, especially in California, uh, the Republican Party dropped 5% in the last two, two years in registered voters. You've been out trying to register voters, trying to get people out to register. Um, I look at something like the Republican Party in California and the fact that we now have more independents, more decline to state, more, uh, you know, more third party voters than we have Republicans. And I'm at, my question for you is this, is, is the Republican Party dead in California? No, and um, I'm, I'm standing here alive and active and saying it's not. Uh, what it is is that the Republican Party needs to really focus more now on the grassroots campaigning. Mm -hmm. You know, the censorship is real. The fact that, you know, we don't have really access to the media, like say some of the, um, you know, those on the left. Uh, and so it's just really getting back to the fundamental principles of, you know, you know, reaching out to people on a personal level and talking to individuals. I don't believe the Republican Party is dead because I'm here. Um, you know, me being an African-American man, speaking on the behalf of our party, you know, it's very much alive and active. It's just a regroup. It's time for us to, you know, rebuild, renew, and restore the Republican Party. Uh, and that's that's my campaign uh, over this year, uh, is to really restore it. Uh, so I'm 100,000 new registered voters this year. That's my goal. I will be very interested to see what uh, new ideas come out of the Republican Party, um, because I think that's one of the, the areas that we've been uh, kind of, or not we, because I'm not a Republican, but I'm also not a Democrat, but the, the Republican Party is falling behind. So my last question for you, uh, before I let you go, Pastor, Councilman, is uh, what's next for uh, Councilman Brian Hawkins? Any uh, aspirations to go after that 36th congressional seat? <laughs> So, you know, um, it's, it's interesting that you asked. Uh, um, the, my biggest focus is San Jacinto, mm -hmm. which sits in the 36th congressional area. Um, you know, I ran to really build the relationship in my community. I ran to, you know, support small businesses and, mm -hmm. and to bring safety into the community and fix a lot of the areas and really get people excited about San Jacinto. You know, we have a lot of projects that are coming up. You know, our Sabogo Casino open up their new resort. It's really, really beautiful. And so there's so many things that's happening. Um, you know, I've been asked by a lot of individuals, uh, you know, what's next? I pray, and I'm a praying man. And God has, over the last few weeks, been opening up doors for me to meet people mm. out in the 36th Congressional District. I've been connecting with a lot of wonderful people in Palm Springs and Coachella Valley and meeting with individuals about the Salton Sea. And so... I can definitely see God's hand moving me into that area because my testimony is big and, and what I stand for is big. And, um, and so I don't rule out what God is doing. And so I trust uh, his plan for my life. Uh, and I'm just a servant, you know, sure. I'm here to serve the people and whatever the people ask of me, whatever my party asks of me, I'm, I'm there to serve. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here for the people. And I don't want the people to ever forget that, that, it's time for the people to really feel important in politics. The people, no doubt about it. Councilman Brian E. Hawkins, I appreciate you being a part of the show. Yes, sir. Um, thank you so much for uh, for being a part of this. Um, if you need to reach out to Councilman Hawkins on Facebook, feel free to do so. Um, you can find him at Pastor Brian, um, or you can follow his Facebook page, which is... Uh, I also have a Councilman Brian E. Hawkins page. Um, and so, yeah, you can definitely follow me there. And then my Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Sir Black Patriot.
And if you really want to get in the trenches and get onto Twitter, you'll find him there as well. It was a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. I appreciate yes, you making time. Thank you. All right. All right, Amy. Hey, good, good morning, morning, French Valley. I am here with Nicola Nunez and Roger Nunez, who are the small business owners of FSL Mobile Auto Repair. And they also run a nonprofit called Backpacks for Change. So thank you guys so much for coming here today. Um, I want to first find out about your small business um, and what you guys do with mobile auto repair. So if you guys want to explain to our community about what you guys do, we'd love to hear. Well, um, first off, we uh, come out to the home residence, um, work on the vehicles there. Um, we go as far as replacing small little bulbs, the oil changes, maintenance, and, you know, some of the bigger repairs that are needed. That way there's, um, you know, people don't have to leave their homes, <laughs> especially at this time right now. Right. But, and how have you guys adapted with COVID? Um, so we definitely try and keep our employees safe as well as our customers. Um, we have hand sanitizers, gloves, masks. Uh, we offer no contact. Um, if a customer would like to leave the keys in a designated spot, they can. Um, we take payments over the phone. So there could be very little to no contact if that's what their preference is. Um, which just makes it easy and convenient and whatever makes them feel the most comfortable is definitely what our goal is. Very smart. I love that. No contact mobile auto repair yeah. right here in our local community. Um, do you want to give us a little background on, on how you got into the business and, and everything about what you guys have going on? Yeah. So uh, I started off as a hobby when I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, went to school for about two years uh, at um, UTI graduated with smog, so I do have a smog, you know, license and background in that. Um, once I graduated from there, you know, I ran a smog shop for about four years, um, became a heavy line tech at uh, Hyundai. Um, I had some background at Kia and I did work for uh, Tesla for about two years and worked on the electric cars as well. Wow, that's absolutely yeah. fascinating. So yeah. <laughs> your experience is, is vast and uh, your wisdom with mobile auto repair is absolutely needed right now, especially in the times that we're in. Oh, yeah. Can't get much more convenient than that. Um, so what I want to do now is go into your nonprofit uh, Backpacks for Change. And I saw that you guys have been doing a lot of big work in the local area and even in other states. Um, you guys have been going out basically filling backpacks with hygiene products. Um, you, you guys feel free to let them know what you guys are collecting yeah. and, and what it is that you guys are doing exactly. Okay, well, we started this uh, with our friend Tori Hunter a couple months ago. And uh, what we do is provide law enforcement, victim advocacy centers, um, the human trafficking units, those first responders that um, go in, they rescue these children victims or child victims of human trafficking. And we really wanted to put something together, um, kind of like an instant comfort. You know, um, there's things where they can just change their shirt, they can brush their teeth, they can, yeah. you know, just clean up, or there's also a stuffed animal, a blanket in each backpack. Um, our kids draw little pictures, they put them in there with happy little messages, just Something, Something to make to them feel, feel safe. safe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because they've just gone through such a huge ordeal, and um, it's just nice to be able to have something of their own, and um, they can just have that for comfort, and again, to just kind of whatever hygiene necessities that they need um, yeah. at the moment, uh, just to, to clean up or whatever it is, but just wanted to have something for them. Um, in the meantime, while they're waiting for where they're going to be placed or what the next uh, action is for them, um, and so we've done drop-offs in Arizona. Uh, Tori Hunter, she does a lot of work out there. She was able to do um, 20 backpacks out in Arizona. We just did 30 for San Diego Human Trafficking Unit. We have Hemet on the list coming up here. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited about that too. And we do all ages. It's zero to 18, um, both genders. Um, and so the backpacks vary a little bit based on 
age appropriateness, mm -hmm. um, but on our website, backpacksforchange.net, we have a list of donation items that we could use okay. um, and uh, other ways to help, you know, even if it's just, you know, how to make masks, you know, how to make a blanket, um, we would love any of that kind of stuff uh, that we can throw in there would be great. So we're just mm -hmm. really trying to get those backpacks out there, you know, to the kids because when we talk to these um, departments, they tell us, you know, not only are they so grateful for the backpacks, but that they're going to be used quickly. And so we're trying to keep up that rotation um, and so where the need is, and it's just not a one-time donation, it's something that they're going to need continuously. And so we're really trying hard to keep up with that. Um, as well as reach out to other places that need them, not just one. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to, and if, if anyone knows uh, a victim advocacy center um, or a local law enforcement department that would have use of these backpacks, mm -hmm. feel free to reach out too. We'd love to put them on the list. Awesome. Yeah. We definitely want to connect you guys with CERT. Um, they're out there doing a lot of big things, and you guys are very much on the same page. So. Um, I am so honored that you guys were able to come here and join us today on our community network. And we'd love to get some business your way out there at FSL oh, Auto Repair yeah, and some backpacks for you guys and your nonprofit. So where can people get a hold of you guys? Where can we make some donations? If a car breaks down and you <laughs> get a hold of you, let, yeah. let them know. Where can we get a hold of you guys? Um, so 951-795-6665. That's for FSL. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, uh, just give us a call. You'll probably talk to me. Yeah. And I can set you up for an appointment. We have another technician, Norm. He's wonderful. Uh, very experienced. He's a very nice guy, too. Um, and then for the backpacks, we have our website. Um, we're also on social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Feel free to email us. Our website is on there. Um, we're working on donations uh, somewhere we can set up where they can drop off, and um, we can post that. We also have other informational tidbits on our social media accounts, so we can learn a little more about how to keep our children safe. And, um, or we offer local pickup, too. If you want to place a donation on your front porch, we'd be happy to come by and pick them up for you. Uh, no contact. If you like, uh, we can set it up that way too. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working on. Hopefully we have more information on uh, where we can establish a, a good place to drop off, which maybe we can. We're hoping to, to get that worked out with our yeah. community. Um, so we would like to get a drop-off location set up here so that, uh, as you said, this is an ongoing um, donation that is needed um, throughout the year, 365 days a year. Yes. Um, so if you guys want to swing by here, bring by your donations, we'll get a drop-off set up for you guys. Um, and then that way you guys can swing by, you know, State of Rose parking lot, uh, bring your donations here, hygiene products, blankets, teddy bears, yes. uh, both yes. genders. So please, 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 fresh clothes, fresh socks, you know, anything helps. Um, so thank you all for tuning in today, and back to you, Zach. Hey, great job, Amy Serpa. We appreciate you doing such a great job there with that interview. Um, everybody was really uh, loving uh, backpacks. Uh, for for a cause here, you got uh, the the comments are still going nuts. FSL Mobile Auto Repair is awesome. Uh, that's awesome. You're, the the kids are at home. They said uh, they said great work, mom. You're you're doing a great job. And that's one of the things that you know. Of course, Zach and I have uh, we both are involved in one capacity or another in combating human trafficking, and uh, with uh, different ministries. And that's something that we do here. And you don't have to be somebody kicking in doors. No. There are so many different ways to get involved. Am I right, Zach? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people feel like, you know, they ask me all the time, how can I get involved? How can I get involved? And I've been telling everybody, I say, you know, especially with a place like, like FSL, like backpacks, like certain ministries, I say, set up a $10 a month recurring donation mm -hmm. and then get 10 more people to set that same donation up. You know, if a, if a place like CERT or these, these groups fighting human trafficking were to get 1,000 people donating $10 a month, mm -hmm. that would save three kids a month. That would save three children a month. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And so, so really great job. We appreciate them coming, uh, coming on the show and being a part of, uh, part of that. Uh, now we've got one more thing that we're going to jump into before we cut everybody loose. This is something that I have been working on for a long time. 
a long time. And uh, normally I don't like to make us the source of the news here at our community news, but I want to talk to you about our real estate school. Whether you are an adult or whether you are in high school, this is a, a really amazing program that we have going on where we've tailored this program towards high school and then for adults that are either unemployed or underemployed. And we're going to teach you not only all the boring stuff that comes with uh, real estate education for free, but we're also going to teach you about all of the stuff that people said that they wish that they had known. So, uh, so Zach Bach, you're part of our community. Yes, sir. Uh, what, have, uh, what have you got to say, my friend? I mean, it's a, a lot of people, especially going through real estate school when they're, they're going through these normal real estate schools, the, the common theme is always they get out of real estate school and they go, now what? what do I do now? How do I actually sell real estate? Mm -hmm. And they get out and then they don't sell anything. Mm -hmm. And then they get burned out and they quit and they go back to a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. And there's no need for that. You know, there's no need for that because most people don't learn how to actually run a business. And that's the biggest thing that we can change is educating future real estate agents how do you how do you become successful? Mm -hmm. How do you you know when you go to when you go in the military, they stick you in boot camp for eight, twelve weeks, sixteen weeks, and they say we're going to teach you exactly how to be successful in the military. Which is I'm so glad that you brought that up. Um, you said uh, you said when you go into the military, and so you know you're a military veteran, I'm a military veteran. Uh, today we have the introduction to real estate with Stuart Jacobson, and the adult class is going to be broadcast live next week. But this is for anyone who wants to get into real estate anywhere in the country. But um, after that class. Uh, we have a very interesting class, which is our commission boot camp class. So we figured out a way for people to learn uh, to, to make money while they are earning their real estate license. That's one of the biggest barriers that we have realized when it comes to people getting licensed is that it's hard to make money in the beginning. And people can't wait six months to get paid. So we've developed the our commission uh, boot camp, um, which is going to be run by Zach, who's a military veteran, Amy, who's a military veteran, and uh, our good friend Andres Dorente uh, Gonzalez. And then uh, Christian Stone is going to teach cold calling um, on uh, week three. Uh, Melissa Huck is going to teach open houses. It's one thing to learn about real estate and getting licensed. It's another thing to actually know how to get paid. Susan Ebert is going to come and talk about um, uh, door knocking. Um, one amazing thing that I have never seen anyone be able to do, which is door knock in front of a bus full of people, um, and that's Susan Ebert. Uh, Nick Baldwin, who runs the largest international group of real estate agents online, it's called Lab Code Agents, he's going to be teaching us about modern technology, artificial intelligence, uh, using CRMs, IDXs to get paid. Uh, Ricardo Acevedo. Ooh. Everybody knows who he is, and they don't realize they know who he is. That's the funny part. When you're driving down the 15 <laughs> freeway, or the 215 Or the freeway, 90, or the 61. Or the 91 freeway, <laughs> and you see a, 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 geez, a billboard, it's Ricardo Acevedo and his wife. He's probably got 100 billboards. So he's going to talk about branding, and that's a huge deal. Uh, Leslie Hill is going to talk about becoming a transaction coordinator and how important that is to your business. Barino Barino of Real Estate Rockstars is going to uh, talk about having a perfect schedule, which that's one of the big things that people lose themselves in, is uh, doing a bunch of stuff that aren't actually money-making activities. So if you haven't realized already, this is an education, not just in real estate, but just in general. And it's free, so there's no reason not to get involved. Greg Fowler from Lionbolt Media is going to talk about creating media presence. Kim Steele from Kim Steele & Associates is going to talk about running a real estate team. Darren Campbell, the $4 billion man, is going to uh, discuss mentorship and coaching. Now this is the best that I could do with my network. I wanted to get, just pack this full of great people. We have another financial planner coming in to talk, but it's during tax season, so he said don't hold me to it. And then uh, Rosie Rodriguez, who's a partner here at our community, um, she's going to talk about getting hired, the importance of shopping different brokerages and not just committing to any one brokerage. Um, and then Shaniqua Badger, who was uh, named one of the most influential people um, there on LinkedIn, is gonna talk about building a social network uh, and then Jamie Z. Harris, who's donated just thousands, thousands, I think over $200,000. Every, every commission check she gets, she donates a portion to a nonprofit. So she's inspired Katie and I to do the same. This is what was something that we're going to be doing in 2021. 10% of every commission check that comes in, we're going to be donating to a uh, charity of our clients choosing because we were inspired by Jamie Z. It's a pretty incredible thing. Uh, Rick Jihad, the Freedom Pathfinder, is going to discuss building a business plan. And I'm going to be your daily instructor. I'm going to be there every day with you doing all of the boring stuff. So uh, if you want to be a part of our community, um, feel free to, uh, to be a part of that. Uh, we have our open house tomorrow. We have our school 
Monday through Friday, starting at 4 for uh, high school students, and then next week, Monday through Friday from 9 to 10, and we have it recorded. So uh, if you can't make it, don't worry about it. You can always watch it online. Uh, we're not, we don't need to. So we're going to do a little bit of a recap now, guys. Uh, we had over 100 likes, 89 loves throughout the course of this transact or this uh, <laughs> transaction, <laughs> this show. Good night. I've been stuck real in the real estate. estate world a little bit too long. Um, so to start the show, oh, we had uh, Councilman and Pastor Bryony e. Hawkins. It was an amazing interview. He did a great job, really talking about unifying some people in Hammett and San Jacinto in the 36th Congressional District. Um, if you will want more Pastor Brian E. Hawkins, uh, more of the councilmen, feel free to check out the Divine Appointment Worship Center in San Jacinto. Um, FSL Mobile Auto Repair came in, and they got some love from the kids. They said, Mom, Dad, you did a great job, and you did do a great job. You're doing good things for everybody out there, uh, and they are... Uh, participating in Backpacks for Change. Amy said that she'll set up a station here at the office if you want to get uh, drop off stuff to help out. There was over 30 backpacks donated in one day for the San Diego Human Trafficking Task Force. That's something that they're doing regularly. Um, and then, of course, if you want to participate in our real estate school, real estate education, come on out or participate online. And now we're going to get to the question of the day. Um, so everybody said, uh, oh, Nick is going to, uh, participate in boot camp. Nick, I saw that. or no, Tom, 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 we're ready for you. Come Good be a Tom. part of it, my friend. Um, uh, we've got a lot of good things going on. You can do it online or you can do it in person. The question of the day, Zach Bach, you remember what the question of the day was? Should there be a limit on free speech? Should there be limits on free speech? Now, when I de decided that this was going to be the question of the day, I was looking at, you know, President Trump's Twitter account. Uh, I was looking at the fact that the Facebook account has been shut down for certain people. And I'm wondering, should there be limits to free speech? What are your thoughts, Zach? Well, you know, it's, uh, it comes back to what you, people used to say all the time was it comes down to should you be allowed to yell fire inside of a non-burning burning building? You know, mm -hmm. if I'm in a movie theater, can I yell fire? Well, that was deemed, you know, you can't legally do that. You can get arrested for that, especially if people get hurt. And, you know, we, we have... The, the nation is so polarized right now that you have a lot of people going, well, the president is inciting riots. And then you have the other side going, he's not doing anything. And there's a lot of butting heads. And actually what's interesting about this is there was an interview between Jack Dorsey and Ted Cruz mm -hmm. where Ted Cruz said to Jack Dorsey, who's the CEO of Twitter, and said, who made you the decider? Who made you, Mr. Dorsey, decide what and what is not free speech? Okay. You know, and there's a large debate right now of, our social media platforms, yes, they're private entities, but it's how people spread their voice. Now. So that's what I was going to get into. Um, now, it's one of this, the interesting things here, and, and this is a very interesting bait, debate to be had, is who is the arbitrator of, you know, um, what, you know, who should be silenced? Now, the truth is, is it's like with these private entities, is to a certain degree, it's like a, it's a private, it's a private home. It's a private residence. And they get to determine how you are going to use their platform and how you are not going to use a platform. And then people get to determine whether or not they're going to use the platform. So I think, uh, now I'm a massive advocate of free speech. And um, I don't believe that free speech was meant to protect comfortable speech. I believe that free speech was meant to protect the uncomfortable speech. Mm -hmm. And that if you're uncomfortable with somebody saying something, um, you know, that's kind of on you. But, you know, if there's violence caused, what do you do with this sort of stuff? Yeah. And so that's where we're at. And that's where I would really love to get your opinion. Should there be limits on free speech? Do these private companies, uh, should they shut down uh, Twitter feeds? Should they shut down people on Facebook? Um, and so uh, let us know what you think. So uh, at I've this always, point. I've always wanted to do this. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. In the comments below. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we had a really fun show. We appreciate everybody, uh, being a part of it. Uh, just a little recap here in the comments. Um, let's see. Deanna said, good morning. Deanna is, uh, she's going to be working the front desk here at our community once we officially open up. So good morning to you, Deanna. Uh, Michelle Santos says, happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday, Monday to you, my friend. Um, Tom. Hello. Hello, sir. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Uh, Tom says, good morning to Hillary. Hey, good morning, mom. Um, and then uh, good job to, uh, to Nikki. Uh, we had a number of audio problems on the show. That's okay. That happens. We got everything figured out eventually. 
Uh, good point. Thank you for putting it in perspective, Pastor. That was Pastor Brian Hawkins. Really incredible interview. I suggest running it back and uh, to where we figured out the audio on that one and jumping in because that's a really great interview. He did a fantastic job. Um, yes, everybody was very much feeling um, what he has to say. And then uh, we love FSL. FSL got a ton of love. They did. FSL got all the love this morning. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoy starting my Mondays off with uh, with this this valley. It's a really great way to start the week. Um, so, and of course, uh, so if you if you guys want to be a part of this, if you want to be a part of the show, um, feel free to do that. Send us a message. Let us know how you can contribute. Let us know what a terrible job we're doing and how we need to fix all of the audio issues. <laughs> whatever it is that you want to, whatever it is that you want to do, feel free to, to hit us up. We're certainly having a lot of time in the meantime. And then, uh, um, so and then, uh, just really quick, my mom said, and this is my mo if you guys want comment, I'm going to put more of my mom's comments up here. It said it should be up to the individual to decide uh, what they want to hear. Um, I tend to agree with you. So does Tom. Uh, my wife says good morning. Good morning, darling. And then uh, Pastor Brian, great show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. And David, that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Zach is trying to fit into this. That's how the that's cookie crumbles. That's going to be my tagline. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Mecula Valley. It was a, uh, a great thing having you guys. Just The show has become a huge thing. Our community news is a lot of fun. We look forward to seeing you this Friday. For our community news weekend edition, we'll give you the two-day forecast, the weekend weather. Uh, we'll have all sorts of new stories for you. Make sure that you tune in live by liking our community on Facebook. And, uh, and also feel free to give us a uh, subscribe on YouTube. Um, until next time, that's how the cookie crumbles.